Hi friends, and welcome to Tiny Technical Tutorials, where we do bite-sized lessons for today's tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a mail merge to create labels in Microsoft Word using data from Microsoft Excel. Now there's two things you're going to need before you get started. First is the addresses. I've got all my data in Excel here. This is just sample address data that I got online here. You'll need something similar. You don't have to use exactly the same column names or anything that I have here, but it is a good idea to separate your first name, your last name. We're not going to use company name, but we do need address, city, we'll need state, and zip. These names up here again are not important to be the same as what I'm using, but just something that makes sense for you. So have your address data in Excel. And then the other thing you need to know is what type of label you're using. What type of physical label are you going to be printing on? I've chosen Avery 5160 labels here. These are pretty common, something you can find on Amazon or go down to your local big box office store. Surely you can find these or whatever else you want to use. Word supports a large variety of vendors and different label types. But just know what that is and then head over to Word. We're starting with a blank document here and we're going to go up to Mailings and start Mail Merge. You'll notice you can use this for letters, emails, envelopes, and so on, but we're going to focus on labels for this video. And here's where that label information comes in. So up here you've got different label vendors. Like I said, there's support for a lot of different vendors here. So you definitely don't have to go with Avery. It's just a common one. And then you'll choose the actual product number. So that was 5160 that I was using. You'll see there's a ton of options here though. Just scroll down. 5160, make sure that it's exactly the same as the physical thing that you have, the physical label. If you want details on that, you can see the height, the width, the margin, and so forth. You can adjust these, but I'd recommend that you don't because these are set up to match the actual dimensions on the physical label. Okay, that looks good. We'll say okay. And there you go. So it's given us the label layout. It has the right margins around the page. It has the right spacing here between the columns. It has the right number of rows and columns, all that kind of stuff. So that's all being created based on the label template you selected. Okay, now we want to select the recipients. In other words, where are we getting this data from? Where are we getting all the addresses from? So select recipients. You could type a new list, but we have that one in Excel that we're going to use. So use an existing list. Here's the addresses workbook that we saw earlier. And I'll just call out if you open up the different types of files that accepts here, you'll see that it's a lot. We've got different database files. We've got Excel, obviously we're using that. You could even put your names into another Word document and so on. So lots of different data sources accepted here. But again, we're using Excel for this, so we'll say open. If I had multiple worksheets in that workbook that I'll show up here, I just have the one. So that's what I'm going to keep. And then importantly, I have the first row of data that contains column headers. I want to leave that selected. Let me show you what I mean over in Excel. This is my first row here, and I've got column headers. So the actual data doesn't start until row two. So it's important that you either leave this selected if yours is just like mine, or if you don't have headers, that's okay too. It's just going to go by column A, B, and so forth. But I'm going to leave that selected for mine and say okay. And there we go. So no actual data is being pulled in yet, but this next record just basically tells Word, okay, you want to advance through the different records, through the different rows in Excel, and pull out a new record to put in each one of these cells. Okay, but nothing's coming over yet, so that's where we have to map what we want here to the different columns in the Excel worksheet. To do that, we say Insert Merge Field, and you'll see these are the names. These are getting pulled out of my Excel worksheet. So we want first name, space, last name, then I'm going to hit enter. Next we want the address, enter, city, comma, space, I'm just typing those in, state, space, space, and then zip. If you want to see what that looks like with the actual data, you can click on preview results. And there you see James Bloom. He's our first contact in the Excel spreadsheet, and that's coming through perfectly. All right, but nothing else is coming in yet. We need to put in the same information behind the next record tag here. And I'll just do that down the rest of the document and be back in one second. 
Okay, I filled that into all of the cells, and now if we preview results, you'll see we're getting actual data on the entire page here, which is just what we want. The formatting looks good, everything is spaced correctly, so we're good to go. The very last thing you need to do is actually do the merge. So this has just sort of been the setup, but we need to do the merge now. We're going to choose the top option to edit individual documents. That just basically means it's going to create a new Word document for us. You could also send this to the printer or send it to email. But let's choose this first one. And then we want to merge all the records. If for some reason you just wanted to merge, say, records 1 to 10, you could enter that here. But we're going to go with all. So it's doing that merge, grabbing all the data out of Excel. You'll see we have a new document here, labels 1. And it's multiple pages. So if we scroll through, you'll see all that contact information is coming over from Excel. And now I could save this document, I could print it. Likely you want to print it onto those labels that you have, feeding them through the printer. I won't be doing that for the demo, but you're all set and you could do that next. And there you have it. That's how to set up a mail merge in Microsoft Word, pulling data from Microsoft Excel. If you found the content valuable, we always appreciate the likes, subscribes, and shares.